having refilled my brush and uh, realized that I had shot an entire video without the camera actually being on, I am now ready to begin the value scales and watercolor. I'm going to start with just plain old water and I'm going to add only the tiniest little drop of pigment. I'm using a 147 blue in this uh, Koi palette. And I'm going to start here at the end and you can see that it's just slightly tinted water. That's going to be my lightest light. And I'm going to gradually add more pigment in each box. And I've got my spaces built in this time. I've got my little eighth inch spaces in between the one inch boxes in the grid so that the paint doesn't bleed into the next box. This little drop of water here that I'm moving around in watercolor is referred to as the bead and you move it around. But again, uh, you don't want too much friction on the page because friction is gonna cause the paper to break down and become pulpy while it's wet. And we don't want that. It makes it look messy. So I'm adding just another teeny little bit of pigment as I go so I can get a gradual scale. And when you start to feel the resistance of the paper, the, uh, the raised texture of the paper is called the tooth. When you feel that resistance, it means you need to add a little more water to carry your pigment. And I want this to settle evenly, so I gotta move that bead around without applying too much pressure. And step by step, we get a little bit darker. Doing the outline. And then I can use the pigment and the water that exist in the outline and move those around. And if I end up with too much water on the pigment, like I, uh, on the page like I have right now, you can dry your brush off with a paper towel and kind of touch the brush to the paper and it'll absorb some of what's there. You gotta be really gentle doing this because if you apply too much friction, it's gonna make this paper uh, turn into pulp. One of the trickiest things about watercolor is getting the uh, water, pigment, and friction combination right. It takes some skill, it takes some practice, but watercolor does some pretty amazing things. And I think you will be pleased with the results. Getting a bit darker. See, I'm being very gentle with the tip of the brush. I'm not really rubbing the paper. I'm kind of, I'm going to dab it on rather than smear because this puts less pressure on the paper. And it'll all blend together as the liquid carries it around. I'm going to get the darkest dark. Lots of pigment, but I still need water to carry it around.
And this one I want super, super dark. I want this one to be almost all pigment. And to do that, I'm gonna have to use that dabbing motion. And we've got a gradient from the darkest dark I can make down to almost just plain water. And this is your value scale. So you got dark values, a mid value, and then your light values down here. And I'm cleaning the brush, just squeezing a little bit of water, wiping it on a paper towel, and it's ready for the next color.